says, I hurried to my clothes. The Bible says that this woman and her two sons begin to fill the jars. And miraculously, the oil continued to flow until the last jar had been filled. And she went back to the man of God and said, man of God, what shall I do to survive? He says, I want you to sell the oil and you and your sons live off what's left. Isn't that just like our God? He won't bless you with just a little bit. He won't bless you with just enough. But he'll give you an overflow. And I declare that I feel the spirit of overflow in the sanctuary on this afternoon. Somebody lift your hands and say, oh, overflow, overflow, overflow. Now this widow woman, I like her, I like her because she sounds like a survivor. <laughs> May I present to you that in the rough seasons of your life, you've got to know how to survive. Now I just want to leave three thoughts, three thoughts, three things, three things that I can leave with you on this afternoon if you don't get nothing else that I see in the text because that's what the word does. The word causes us to align ourselves with the characters that's being displayed. Now there are three characteristics that I see in the surviving widow woman. May I share them with you? I think I will. The Bible says that if we would prophetically align ourselves with this widow this afternoon, we would see a few things that she already had to help her survive. And the people of God, I need you to understand that if you're going to survive, that you must have these three things. First, you got to have perseverance. And perseverance is defined as persistence and determination. May I tell you that in order to survive through a rough time, you've got to be determined to live. Yes, yeah, so you've got to have a made up mind that no matter what comes or no matter what goes, I'm still going to live. No matter what tries to take me out, no matter what deserves to take me out, I'm still going to live. Anybody know that you're still here today because you had a made up mind that you're still going to live? I'm going to live through the hurt. I'm going to live through the pain. I'm going to persevere through the struggle. I don't care if they're talking about me. I'm going to live through the divorce. I'm going to live through the broken heart. I'm going to live through the breakup. I'm going to live through the bankruptcy. Touch your name and say, I'm going to live. You got to have perseverance and you got to be you got to be so encouraged that you're gonna make it that even if you have to encourage yourself David says sometimes I found myself in a place that I had to encourage myself in the Lord see when everybody walks away from you you have to know that you're strong enough to make it with the help of the Lord when everybody turns their back on you and people criticize your name you've got to know that you're strong enough with enough determination to make it with the Lord on my side. For he said that I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'll be with you now, forever and always. He's the same God yesterday, today, and to and forevermore. Somebody clap your hands and say, I'm glad I know him. See, perseverance says that I don't have to look for a man's approval. Although I would appreciate your acceptance, but that does not define who I am because I'm somebody without you. Uh -huh. See, I'm still anointed without you. I'm still called and chosen without you. So it does not matter what you think about me. All that matters is what he thinks about me. For I am a chosen generation. I'm a peculiar people. I'm a holy nation that I should go forth and show forth the praises of him who has called me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Anybody glad that he chose you? He chose me me he chose me but I must encourage somebody to tell you that 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 says and he said unto me that my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness see you've already got everything that you need in order to survive look at somebody and say it's already in me yeah, 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 yeah. The second thing that the widow shows us is that in order to survive is you got to have some power. Just touch your neighbor and say power, power. 
See, you've got to be able to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because if the truth be told, the things that are coming up against you right now, if you are not strong, it may just take you out. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, this is Pentecost Sunday, verse 8, it said, but ye shall receive power. Who? After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Just touch your neighbor. If you're not scared, and say, I got power. I got power to make it. I got power to survive. I got power to live. I got power to get victory. I got power to triumph. Just touch yourself and say, I got power. Oh, yes, I do. I got power. Somebody lift your voice and say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Yes. We got power. You got everything that you need to survive. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you survived. Now lastly, 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 you cannot forget about the God that has brought you through. Now, I said you had to have perseverance. That's one P. I said you had to have power. That's another P. But the last thing that I don't ever want you to lose is the next P, and that's praise. Just touch your neighbor and say, I never lost my praise. I wouldn't have made it without praise. Because David says that praise is comely for the upright.